Today, we're going to be discussing the new anticipated launch of 1.1 cycle in last epoch on July 9th. We're going to be covering what's new and the new quality of life and more changes coming to patch 1.1 on July 9th. Now, before we get into that, we're going to watch the official trailer on the Harbingers of Ruin. And then we'll get back to the details of what's new and all the quality of life features and class balance changes that's coming to the game on July 9th. But before we watch the trailer, a lot of you continue to watch my content and yet do not subscribe. If you can find it in your heart to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. It'll help my channel grow and reach a larger audience. And at the end of the day, that's what I would like my channel to be. Get in front of more faces and ears. So hit the subscribe button, please. I would really appreciate it. Okay, let's watch the official trailer of Harbingers of Ruin. You remind me of him, Traveler. It's that same unwavering hope that led us straight into oblivion. And now, you're part of a war that you don't fully understand. I tried to warn you, to spare you, but his eyes are upon you now. There is no time left, no refuge, no hope. His harbingers are coming. Wow, looks awesome. Can't wait. July 9th can't come fast enough. So let's get into what's new and then we'll get into all the quality of life features coming with the patch 1.1. So first of all, 11th Hour Games says hello and welcomes everybody to all the stuff that's happening in 1.1. And first we're going to talk about Evade, which is a new mechanic that a lot of us have been requesting and it's going to be available to all classes and transformations and it's going to start at level one and as you progress your character and skills so does the evade mechanic now this is how it's going to start with a four second cooldown and like i said as your character progresses and levels up so does the cooldown and how many times you can evade now this other new encounter system which is called nemesis it's a new random encounter system and basically you encounter a harbinger of ruin and basically this is because not everyone is going to be able to get to the new end game mechanic the pinnacle boss fight this is a random encounter that they've put into the game so people that don't get to the pinnacle boss quickly at least get a taste of something new in the game. So it's called the Nemesis. And as you can see in this animation, there's some sort of uh, loot table, for a lack of a better term, that comes up and it shows what the Nemesis can offer if you defeat it, if you so choose to defeat it. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, but so there are potential drops that the Nemesis will show you. And then you have three options from what I can tell and that is you can first banish so when you meet this nemesis banishing the nemesis will cause the encounter to be put to rest banishing both the current nemesis and the items it offers this will provide you the opportunity for a completely new section of items in the next nemesis you find without fighting the current nemesis so if we go back to this animation when you encounter a nemesis, it'll display a bunch of loot. 
you can look at it. If you don't like the loot, it's not applicable to your class, um, then you can basically banish it. So that's the first one. Second, you can challenge the nemesis. And the second option you will be given is to challenge the nemesis. By selecting to challenge the nemesis, you will rise from its grave to return to the fight. Should you succeed in putting the nemesis to rest, you'll receive all the items that which were displayed in the earlier UI. If you defeat the nemesis, the next one you encounter will have a new set of items. So you come across the nemesis, it displays the items that it can potentially drop if you beat it, you challenge it, you beat it, you get those items that it displayed. So that's the second option. The final option you will be provided with is the ability to empower the nemesis. By selecting empower, the nemesis will awake in and attack you in its rage. Then upon defeating it, it will flee instead of dropping its items. You will encounter the same nemesis again next time, which will have the same items available, but giving them potentially increased affix tiers, forging potential or legendary potential. Empowering a nemesis can also add new affixes to items, including non-experimental sealed affixes. Empowering is able to upgrade sealed non-experimental affixes all the way to rank six and seven. Wow, that is amazing, which hasn't been possible before. So again, we go back to this animation. You encounter the nemesis. You'd see the items that it can potentially drop. You're like, wow, these are pretty good. But if it had a, a little bit more tweaking or if they were higher rank affixes, wow, these would be really good. So you can empower this nemesis. It'll take off. You'll encounter it again. And those same items will be displayed, but enhanced for a lack of a better term. So that is the third option. So you can banish, challenge, or empower this new nemesis encounter. And then there is another item in the game in reference to the nemesis, and that is the Egg of the Forgotten. It's a unique stone egg and can be replaced with a unique item that lacks both legendary potential and weaver's will, changes into a random unique if dropped or empowered. Nemesis can also be found with a re re special reward type, an Egg of the Forgotten. If you immediately challenge the Nemesis, the Egg will reward random unique. However, you can instead replace it with your own unique item that has no legendary potential. This item is then empowered through the Nemesis system and can become a legendary by gaining random affixes or instead even gain legendary potential. Now, again, if we go back to the animation here, you can see that's exactly what this animation shows. They use the egg to replace the ring and to get something else better. Um, so this is kind of like the fourth option for a lack of a better term on what you can do with this new nemesis encounter. So really good, something different that allows us again to fine tune, min max our characters and kind of control the loot that we're getting. And it's done through this nemesis encounter. All right. So Harbinger and Forgotten Knight, and basically this is um, getting into the Forgotten Knight's faction. So after defeating the first Harbinger, you will begin your journey with the Forgotten Knight's faction. Now, point of clarity, the other two factions are not being replaced. The way I understand it, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong from what I've read, is the Forgotten Knights faction is in addition to whatever uh, faction you join in last epoch. So you are going to you are going to earn reputation with the Forgotten Knights faction uh, and whatever other faction you choose to play in the game. So after defeating the first Harbinger, you will begin your journey with the Forgotten Knights faction. You will find the Forgotten Knight herself in her camp upon the Shattered Road. Here you will learn the Harbinger's history, yada, 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 yada. And then as you make your way through the Harbingers, you will progress your rank with the Forgotten Knights faction. This faction is available to both Merchants Guild and COF players rather than being an alternative choice. And this is where I gather and made the previous statement. This is in addition to the Merchants Guild or the COF uh, faction, okay? Um, so basically, here are the rank rewards 
for the Forgotten Knights faction. And guys, I'm not going to go into every single detail here. I will link these two uh, forum posts in the video description and you can read everything uh, to as much detail as you want. And now the pinnacle boss information, what we all been waiting for with Har Harbinger eyes in hand and all 10 Harbingers defeated, you can make your way to the portal beyond the shattered road. And there is the portal right there. Place an eye. So we need a Harbinger eye in order to access the pinnacle boss area. Uh, and you will be pulled into the Harbinger's domain. Within this domain, you will face off against the leader of the Harbingers and servant of Orbis, Aberroth. You'll fight. Your fight will take you through the four eras, each presenting unique arena mechanics, empowering Aberroth with new abilities and further crush your hopes of voicing, facing the void. Wow. With the release of 1.1, Harbingers of Ruin, Aberroth will only be will only be able to be challenged on the online cycle. So I'm not going to read it line by line, but basically this was actually in the survey, if you guys remember. How do you want us to deal with this new pinnacle boss mechanic? Do you want us to make it available to everybody? Do you want it just in offline mode or online mode? And basically everybody said, look, make it available only on online cycle mode. This way everybody starts from scratch so everyone has a fair chance to get there first. And then once it's the first person goes in on online cycle mode and beats the pinnacle boss, then open it up to offline and everyone else. And basically this is what it's saying is that they're putting it in uh, online mode only, allowing everyone to have a fair race to it, beat it, once it's beat, it'll open up to every other person. Um, so this is basically what it's saying. Um, they've made some boss defense changes and a lot, there was a lot of confusion about the dynamic damage reduction mechanic with bosses. And again, I'm not going to go into all of it, but they made a really good change to the bosses. And this is all in response to the feedback. And uh, yeah, now there's a new item, gl Glyph of Envy, a very common area of feedback we see that would feel very slow to progress through monoliths and subsequent characters. When addressing this feedback, we didn't want players to simply skip monoliths as that can lead to a worse experience. So they they so they so created this glyph of envy and basically destabilizes an item unpredictably changing all properties other than the effects being up. This stability is siphoned to the most recent monolith timeline you entered, greatly entering, increasing its stability. By upgrading an affix using a glyph of, of envy, it will have two effects. One of the items itself and a second effect on your most recently accessed timeline. Basically, <clears throat> this is going to make leveling alts easier. And if you haven't played Last Epoch and you're not aware, the class balance and the class build diversity in this game is very vast. So you are going to play alternate characters so this is a big win for players like myself that definitely will have multiple characters in last epoch and then another item is the harbinger's needle it's a new item coming uh to further assist with pushing corruption this item is very unique and that it's the first consumable equipped item breaks if equipped when you kill a timeline boss above 90 corruption causing that timeline boss kill to grant three additional gaze of orbises again making it easier to push corruption and increase your corruption and again i'm not going to get into all of that guys you should know all this stuff and this new um needle harbinger needle is going to make pushing corruption a lot easier and quicker they're introducing new uniques and again personally i haven't looked at these at all and call me crazy, I like to see new items in game, in game. I don't like to read them firsthand. I like the surprise element in the game. Call me crazy. Okay, so that's everything that's new. Now, after this post on June 25th, um, they did another post on July 3rd, which covered the quality of life. 
And basically, they talked about a whole bunch of mechanical changes that are coming. And surprise, surprise, holy smokes, Last Epoch already has an amazing inventory and stash space. Um, like, just the quality of life, right? Well, <laughs> unbelievable. They now, we now will have a blessing stash. <laughs> Believe it or not, we are now, there's now going to be an NPC, an NPC at the end of the, the time next to the monolith of fate entrance similar to the passive respect npc for a small gold fee this npc will enable you to swap between the blessings your character has earned and we'll leave it at that uh, there's a lot of other details that it goes into but unbelievable there's now an npc that'll allow us to swap blessings unbelievable really nice quality of life and the beauty of it our alts will be able to benefit from blessings earned from other characters just unbelievable update the quality of life you're going to want to read this in detail it's got some really awesome information and as you can see like um like beautiful ui as well so that is really really nice quality of life they have made ladder improvements the beauty with 11th hour games is they realized there is a core part of the player base that really like the uh, competition of seeing who gets to 100 first or who can beat the most amount of waves in last epoch so they've made some imp the, uh, improvements to the ladder and as you can see here um, people are going to be able to check out and compare themselves to their friends their peers and see where they stack up with the rest of the player base so Awesome, awesome, awesome. There also is an arena ladder. Okay, so there is now a monolith timeline search. Again, this is all QO quality of life, guys. All quality of life. So, for example, as you see here in the animation, if you're looking for where are all the set uh, pieces and gear and weapons on this timeline, you just go into the search timeline, hit set like they are and it'll highlight where it is on the timeline again all these little quality of life details just make the game much more enjoyable we were already impressed with the loot filter in uh, or at least i was in last epoch well they've made some more loot filter improvements and basically they're just drilling down how much detail you can add to the filter so for example you can now have one condition for boots to only show if they have movement speed at tier six or higher, and then another condition to also include at least tier five or higher dex, vitality, or strength. You will now have the option to show the relevant filter rule number at the end of the label names the while the loot filter is open. You'll also be able to show or hide affixes that are incompatible with the item type you are creating a rule for. We are also including the much requested legendary potential and weaver's will filtering. <laughs> wow. Enjoy. Yeah, they know this is going to be a big W. Um, again, their loot filter is already crazy and they're drilling down even more. Unbelievable. Item fact faction changes. I'm not going to get into the changes, guys, but basically they realized both the Circle of Fortune and the Merchant's Guild were lacking in certain things and they're addressing them. So... Also, regarding um, getting to rank 10 and maxing out the rank with each faction was slow and tedious. They now have ramped up and made it quicker to max out the rank with both factions. So, for example, each rank faction also now provides a 5% increased favor gain at maximum of rank 12. You will have 60% increased favor gain. However, experience now scales less with corruption than it did at high corruption values, and favor gain is based on experience gain. Again, another W. Okay, so they go into detail, and again, we're not going to cover it all, but the Merchant's Guild, you know, they know there are some issues with uh, a lot of stuff in the Merchant's Guild. Uh, and we've also heard your feedback on the bizarre search function, and the team is currently working on addressing that. 
especially affix searching, which we plan to release as soon as it's ready during the 1.1 cycle. So I never joined the Merchant Guild, so I don't know specifically what they're talking about, but I heard about this bizarre search function issue. So it's not coming on July 9th, but it is coming into 1.1 cycle. So good news for those of you that are big time Merchant Guild players. And again, it goes in to uh, uh, all the different ranks, rank 12. And as you can see, it used to be rank 10 was the highest. Now it's rank 12. And you can see that they have shifted and it tells you what the previous rank and the rewards was as far as uh, attributed to the rank. So these are all the changes. We're not going to get into it. And COF, same thing. They made a ton of changes as well. And then we have the Gaze of Orbis changes, which basically corruption is an integral part of the last monolith of fate endgame system, yada, yada, yada. And they talked about how previously the Gaze of Orbis had diminishing returns. So in 1.1, each Gaze of Orbis will grant 12 corruption. This takes away the confusion over how much extra corruption you should expect to earn per gaze, and you no longer feel like you can waste gaze due to the removal of diminishing returns per additional gaze. Another thing to help manage corruption now, only four gazes will be consumed at one time. So instead of all the gazes being consumed, some will carry forward is basically the amount of gaze consumed is capped at four to avoid the possibility of adding too much corruption and experiencing a sudden increase in difficulty after killing a shade while increasing corruption in your high in corruption timelines, okay? So, great, great news. They made a ton of class changes. Not going to get into it, but they go into detail on channeling skills. They show everything here. Base skill damage. So, it looks like increase. Looks like they buffed some things here. Shield bash. And you guys can read this in much more detail because there's one thing that I really would like to highlight over all this other stuff. And again, base skills changes are all outlined here. And there are passives that are coming to the Sorcerer, Forge Guard, and Shaman. Shaman, sorry. And here are the Sorcerer passives. Here are the Force Guard, Forge Guard, <laughs> sorry <laughs> and the shaman 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 tomato tomato okay get a good look it's going to be in the description guys link to the description ward we all knew it was coming so don't be surprised that this is in here but we all knew ward was going to be dealt with it was a big issue in the first cycle of last epoch well let me just summarize it by the following uh, basically, if you look at this chart, okay, and I'm going to try, oop, here we go. Can you guys see that? Let me just move it over. Okay, so as you can see here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's about basically up until 4,000 ward. It's basically the same as last cycle. And then after 4,000, as you can see by the red line is old. The green line is the new update 1.1. Basically, the ward is going to decay at a higher rate after approximately 4,000 ward. Okay, much quicker decay, as you can see indicated by the green line. Whereas the old way, the red line, the decay was very slow, giving you the benefit of the ward much longer. Well, that's not going to happen with 1.1. So FYI, to the people that made ward builds 1.1 after 4,000, you're gonna have this DK drop off big time. So put that in your hat, and make sure you remember that when you're making your builds in 1.1. Whew, that was a mouthful. Okay, so that is up to date. Everything last epoch, July 9th, 1.1. We are, we're less than a week away everyone so let me know if you're planning on playing the new cycle in last epoch the harbingers of ruin new pinnacle boss new faction uh new encounter with the nemesis class balance changes 
unbelievable quality of life changes unbelievable 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 this game just keeps on ticking the boxes and improving the boxes just amazing i can't wait i hope you cannot wait as well come and watch me play last epoch on july 9th live on twitch channel name is sammy caps i'm going to be streaming last epoch for god knows how long after july 9th because like i said earlier the class balance and build options in this game are endless so you're definitely going to be creating three four five characters because they're just all so much fun to play anyway let me know what your thoughts are on all what's new and the quality of life coming to 1.1 in last epoch and let me know if you're going to be playing last epoch and if you're looking forward to it and also if you can like the video i would appreciate it and also subscribe to my channel i would appreciate the support and as always We'll hope to see you in Atera. Talk to you next time. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.